What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Feed the Beast Infinity on the Hermitcraft server. So, guys, last episode and the last few episodes before that, we've been working with this IC2 stuff. This is crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, we've been setting up these crazy contraptions over here to try and convert RF to EU. I did find out we don't have to stretch the wires like crazy like I was doing before. We can just kind of compact them like this. But regardless of how we do it, there seems to be some kind of a problem. Like, when the server resets, the cables forget that they're converting from RF to EU, and then everything goes unpowered. So, like, I had this whole thing over here. Remember that monstrosity that I had set up last time? We had this over here. This wasn't getting power. Even though everything was set up right, and it was working when I left. Like, this thing says it's getting points of 5 EU a tick right now. Now it's getting 2048 EU a tick. I don't even know. Um, but anyway... Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, we had this thing set up and I logged off while it was working trying to make some scenarium. I come back on and there's no power. So yeah, things happen. Um, the redneck cable, while it can do the transfers, I think there is some problem with them and the Tesseract conversions. I don't really know, but, uh, somebody told me, actually a few people have told me in the comments that we can use extra utilities that energy transfer node or hyper transfer nodes or whatever they are to convert the power and I think it actually might be a little bit better than these redneck cables so that's something that I want to check out so how do we do that if we do um transfer node let's see transfer node energy transfer node hyper energy this is probably the one we're gonna want so it uses bedrockium ingots. We've already made that in the past, and it uses four transfer nodes energy. Okay, so those are just transfer node items with a breath first search upgrade. You know, I don't think I've ever made patterns for these. I should probably make auto crafting for all this stuff since I really don't want to do this by hand. <laughs> um, yeah, that's actually something that we should do. So if we come over here, so let's see, transfer node hyper. If we do one of those, one of these... Uh, let's do a speed upgrade pattern. Let's go ahead and make one of those. Let's see, what else do we need? Uh, I wish I could hit backspace and go back to that last recipe before I shift click, but you can't do that. So this requires speed upgrades, and I don't have any in the system. Dang, I thought I might, but I didn't. Where are we going to stick these? Let's stick these closer to the top. Yeah, if we can get a way to transfer that EU better, that's definitely what I want to do. So there's a depth first. Let's make a speed. Next, start. All right, so we now have our speed upgrade, so we should be able to make this recipe. And what was the other one? Oh, they're both speed upgrades, so I should be able to make this recipe. Very good. Okay, so now we have all of that stuff. All right, and then what was the final step? So breath first with a bunch of these transfer node items in a QED. We'll make one of these. Okay, so that's something, you know, uh, the QED. Yeah, Quacky Ender Device. I think every time you look it up, it changes the name. Uh, what was the things that go along with these? There was like some kind of a crystal things. Let's see, extra utilities. These things right here, Ender Flux Crystal. I think I need to make a recipe for these. Because the QED uses those for its speed, and I don't believe I've ever made more than just two of those initially when I first made the QED. So let's get these patterns in here as well. Where did I stick that one right here? There's that one, and this one, and that guy. Nice. Okay, and I think we already have a pattern for that guy, so let's not make a pattern for that. Um, Eye of Ender. Next, start, perfect, pattern, made, awesome. Okay, so I want to make a bunch of these things. And my QED is still at the spawn base. So Enderflux Crystal, let's make, I don't know, 20. Start. Okay, so this will make our QED go so much faster. It's kind of slowing down here. There we go. Um... So again, transfer node, the hyper one, required for those a bedrockium ingot. So that's going to require a bunch of these transfer nodes and the breadth first search upgrade. So I have a bunch of transfer nodes. 
Breath First Search Upgrade. We have three of those. I can't remember how many we need. Let's just make ten. That should be good. And instead of like we're going to need a bunch of gold. So let us just grab some gold. All right, guys. So I tell you what. Let's head back to the spawn base. We haven't been here for a little bit. We got a bunch of stuff <laughs> ready to go. I need to get this crafted up. Hey, pig. How you doing? Stay outside. Um, yeah, this is my QED. This is a quad Eret demonstratium. Demonstratium, I guess, what the tooltip says. Uh, so I don't know how you can place these interflex crystals. Like, how far away they can be. Like, can I do it this way? Is this a thing? I mean, obviously, they don't look very good like that, but whoops. Is that a thing we can do? Sit that guy right back there. And that there. Like, do those work? I can't even remember if these even show, like, any particle effects when things are going. Let's try and get this recipe going. So we need to make a transfer node. So breadth first and gold in the corners. So breadth first. And then the transfer nodes. Did all those turn greener green? They might have. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, so those are all working here. <laughs> Alright, well, I'll tell you guys what. Let me wait for this thing to complete. I'm going to try and make the hyper transfer node. We'll do some testing. And we'll be back, guys. Alright, guys. So I went ahead and I got that crafting done. We've made four of these transfer node hyper energies. So, I'm not really sure how these work. I assume we had placed them here. And then we had put a tesseract on top. So, let's do that. Got a hold shift. Okay, so there we go. Holding 1 million RF, powering one connection, searching for inventories. Okay, so how is our compressor doing? It has no power. <laughs> Great. Um. So I'm not really sure how this is supposed to work. Let's remove that. I made some other pipes here. I saw there was an energy extraction pipe. I don't think we need. We I made an energy pipe. Uh, energy pipes don't seem to connect to these machines at all. Um, we could try the glass fiber cable. And energy pipe, does that connect here? Nope, that doesn't connect. Okay, so energy transfer node hyper right there. Okay, that seems to connect to that cable. Alright, so we will put a tesseract on this guy. Okay, 1 million RF powering one connection. And no power. I don't know, guys. I don't know. It looks like this is converting... Well, I can store RF at least. Okay, the next thing I want to try, doesn't look like that's going to power, but if we take one of these nodes, can we stick it on one of these guys? Well, it is gaining RF. So that means it can tr it can convert from EU to RF. All right. Well, it can convert from EU to RF, but if we can't convert from RF to EU, that's kind of not what we need here. Ooh, there's a test right here. Give me. Give me. Okay. So, yeah, I have made three more <laughs> Ultimate Hybrid Solar Panels now. We have a total of six of these. It takes 64 of the uh, Iridium, these little Iridium balls, to make one of those. So, we're still waiting for more Iridium to be produced. Um, I have... Made a second mass fabricator over here, so now we're running on two. Uh, this one right here doesn't seem to be making things very quickly, and this one over here is making things pretty quickly. So I think this one might be getting fully powered, and this one's just kind of getting all the power that's left over. So as we add more of those solar panels here, I expect this one will go faster, and we'll be able to uh, replicate the UU or <laughs> replicate with the UU matter the iridium that much faster. Um, I've also added this ejector upgrade. These are kind of cool. You can take these items. Well, actually, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to ruin it. But if you take this and you right-click it like on this face of the block, it'll be set so it'll always eject this direction to the east. 
Um, if you like right shift right click it on this face, it'll always eject to the south, for instance. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So I have that set up here, so it's automatically ejecting the iridium that that is making right here into this test rack, which goes back to our main base. So every time it makes an iridium, uh, yeah, our number here increases. So I can see how much iridium we have from practically anywhere in this in the base now. So that's really cool. Uh, but getting back to these transfer nodes, yeah, I was looking at the transfer pipes didn't connect, then I saw there was energy transfer pipes, so I tried those, those don't connect. Energy extraction pipe, I think, actually takes power out of something and then puts it into the transfer node, which is not what we want. Um, so it looks like the RedNet energy cable is, in fact, our only option for converting RF to EU. Unless I'm doing something completely wrong here, guys. Uh, I know people have also suggested that I use power converters. Well, power converter mod isn't in this pack, and I think it was last in Feed the Beast Unleashed. Uh, yeah, Portal Gun Project Red, but no power converter mod. Yep, so I don't think there is actually a way other than the RedNet Energy Cable, which seems to be kind of bugged on server resets, that we can convert... RF into EU, which is kind of sad. <laughs> I was hoping there'd be an easy way that we could just plop down that energy transfer node and a tesseract and power all other things, but it just doesn't appear to be the case. So we can take these guys out of there. That ain't gonna work. And we just replace that back here with these and we get power. So yep, yep, that, that's too bad. I was really hoping there would be a quicker and easier way of doing this, but it does not look like it. Okay, guys, so we're going to take a break from this technical IC2 stuff. Unfortunately, the power situation, we're working on it. We are still making our Iridium. We got 32 of them now. We're halfway there to another ultimate hybrid solar panel. Uh, so, yeah, the more Iridium we make, the more solar panels we make, the better off we're going to be as far as energy goes with this mod. But what I want to do, let's go ahead and get a Safari net. Yep. We are going to put some stuff away. <laughs> I just saw this stuff in my inventory. I don't want it there. Uh, we are going to go to the Twilight Forest for a little bit. Um, we're not going to be doing anything crazy there. But what I do want to do is I want to make a glowstone farm. Um, in Twilight. Yep. So one of the mobs in the Hollow Hills, the... The ghosts? The specters? I'm not actually sure what they are. Why? Is this like random leather, like deer died right here. Uh, yeah, those like ghost mobs in like the big hollow hills. I want to capture one of those in a safari net. As far as I understand it, they do drop glue stone, which we are in search of. What is that marker? Maze exit. Yeah, they do <laughs> drop glue stone. Uh, the same as witches, but witches also drop like bottles and sticks and sugar and all this stuff that we don't really care about. I wonder, can I look at my minimap? Do I have a large hollow hill that I can see on my minimap somewhere? Do we have like a direction to go? It's really, well, that's a large hollow hill right here, right? I think that's a large hollow hill. Is there one closer? That's a smaller one. It looks like there should be something here, but I don't see... Oh, you know what? It's one of those trees with the spawners, I think. Yeah, the Twilight Forest is kind of laid out in a grid pattern. So if you find, like, a maze, if you go directly north or south or east or west of it, you'll find another thing. So, like, here's this maze right here. There's a hollow hill right here. And we go up a little bit. There should be something here. Um, yeah, you can see there's kind of, like, a little square here. I think that's a questing ram right there. Anyway, I'm going to put a marker... Right here. I think that's where we want to go. Can I double click that? Let's see. Large hollow. Is it hollowed? Is it hollowed hill? <laughs> or is it hollowed? Like it's hollow inside. I'm not really sure. Anyway, we will go ahead and do that. We'll say Y64. Save. Alright, so we got a marker over here. We're going to fly off in this direction. Yeah, so anyway, I want to capture one of those ghost mobs. We're going to spawn it. And try and get a soul from that, or whatever the uh, draconic evolution thing is when you kill a mob and it drops a thing. I think that's a soul. 
Uh, here we go. Yep, this one looks pretty big. Yeah, double clicking on the mini map like that to set a waypoint. That's so good. Okay, so let's see if we can get inside of this thing. There's a lot of mobs in here. Oh, you know what? Let me just ignore these mobs for a moment. That creeper's gonna blow up. Kaboom! Attack we <laughs> Guys, calm down. Calm down. Now you're all dead. Calm down. What is this thing? A brown shimmering mushroom. Oh, we got transformation powder. Die. Oh my goodness, look at all these spiders! Wow! I just got a new hat, and I've been playing this for how long now? That is so many of those purple spiders, goodness. Uh, what we're looking for is just those little ghost guys. This might actually not be the largest size hollow hill. Yeah, because normally you'd find like a spawner with them in it. That's a cave spider spawner. Hmm, we might have to go around and look a little bit more. Those guys should also be just spawning normally here. Yeah, this might just be a medium sized one actually. Okay, well I tell you guys what, I'm gonna go fly around a little bit, see if I can find a better hollowed hill, or hollow hill, however you see that, that actually has the, I, I wanna say they're specters, but I think they're just ghosts, that have those in them, and we'll be back guys. I don't know guys, so I've been all over the Twilight Forest looking for these hollow hills. This one looks pretty big to me, but this is not the largest size. Like if we look at the map here, I put an X basically on all the hollow hills that I've been to. There's one here, one here, there, here, even here. <laughs> yeah, I've been all over the place looking for a large hollow hill, another one there, and over here. Oh man, yeah, so like I said, I've been all over the place looking at these hollow hills. Uh, the one I'm currently at right now looks pretty big on the mini-map. Um, obviously these are kind of smaller ones over here, but I haven't been able to find one that has those ghosts in it, which is very disappointing. But I've been here for like over an hour and a half, I think. Maybe an hour. <laughs> it's been a long time. I'm done looking. Uh, I'll come back here maybe another time and see if we can find these guys. For now, I think we're going to switch over and... Just go directly to uh, a witch spawner. I kind of didn't want to do that, but it's snowing in my base. Now it's raining. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I didn't really want to do the witch spawner, but I am not having good luck trying to find the largest size hollow hill, which is the only place I know of that... Wow, that's a little bit of lag. Uh, the only place I know of that... Uh, those ghosts actually spawn in, so we'll have to look for that another time. Um, one thing I did do is I got a couple of more mob souls. Let's see, we got an extra bat. These things don't seem to be moving as smoothly as they used to. Uh, yeah, I got, I think, two more bats, a skeleton, and I think I got a this guy right here, the kobold mob soul. I wasn't really trying for these guys, but I ended up getting them anyway. But uh, as far as witches go, I don't think we have a witch in here, do we? It does not look like it. Okay, so what I'm going to end up doing... Let me just double check. Yeah. We have a witch head from Headcrumbs. <laughs> uh, but we don't have a witch mob soul. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to our blood magic area, which we've been neglecting for a while. Yeah, we got some witches up in here. I am going to poke out a block and try and kill some of these guys and see if I can get a mob soul. See if I can do this without them killing each other. Whoops, don't do that. Don't, no, guys, don't fall. There we go. Got him. Now, did that do anything? Yeah, no mob souls. All right, guys, so I'm going to do this for a little while. Uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll be able to get a mob soul relatively quickly. But yeah, let me go ahead and do this, see if I can get one. We'll set up a witch spawner specifically for killing them. All right, I'll see you guys in just a little bit. All right, guys, so I got one of our basic spawners set up here. We just have the stabilized spawner in the, sp in the center with a block on top so mobs won't spawn on top. We got the red net cable with a lever up there, which I actually need to flip uh, to provide that power so we're not going to be spawning mobs. So yeah, just a 9x9 nine nine spawning room. We're not dropping the mobs out of range of the spawner, but we are going to put all the upgrades in there, so it should spawn a decent amount of them. Uh, transfer node with 
A stack of world interaction and speed upgrades going into our main base power tesseract. So we're sending items to the system and receiving energy, which is providing energy to our draconic evolution mob grinder. Uh, I can go ahead and get rid of this thing sometime today. There we go. Uh, so I should just be able to drop our mob soul in here. Oh, it's spinning, I thought. Hmm. Okay, well, I messed something up with the redneck cable. I thought that this should work. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, let's see. Can I hit that with a wrench down there? Can I get to that? Strong cable connection mode. Oh, there it is. Okay, got it. Okay, so now the witch is no longer spinning. So that's good. Uh, so I already have a couple of upgrades in here. Um... Yeah, we have the Nether Star and the Notch Apple. So now we just need to put the Wyvern Core, or Wavern, however you want to say that, and the Awakened Core in here. And we should be good to go. We'll have, like, the max speed spawner. Nice. Okay, so let's get out of here. So it should spawn regardless of light level because we have the Notch Apple in there. Or Nether Star, one of the two. And then it'll also spawn uh, when players aren't around, so... We should see witches spawn pretty quickly here. There we go. That's a decent amount of them. And the grinder's going to take care of business. The only thing i got to set up now is just a way to get rid of all that experience like we did before. <laughs> but yeah, uh, the world interaction upgrade is awesome. That is going to be collecting all of our, um, like, redstone, for instance. We should be getting mm -hmm. a bunch of this into the system, which is cool. Yeah, we'll be getting that. We'll be getting gunpowder and, of course, glowstone. The main reason why I wanted to set up any of this stuff, uh, so we can just let these guys run practically all the time. Yeah, I will have to set up another way to get rid of that experience. Probably something like we did over here uh, with the Enderman, where I just have vacuum hoppers voiding that stuff out. Uh, so that's the next thing I'm going to work on. So let me get on that, and we'll be back. All right, guys. Well, we got it all set up. It's pretty clean, in my opinion. Yeah, I like the way this thing turned out. So, uh, I just ended up doing the ring of vacuum hoppers underneath. The only thing that is picking up is experience, and that is putting it into... Oh, let's not fall into the void. Into these hardened fluid ducts right here, and that is going into a nullifier. So, everything should be fine. The only thing that we're going to get here is those aspect orbs from Thomcraft, but those disappear after just a few seconds. I don't think they're really an issue. Yeah, like, they only last 5 or 10 seconds and they're gone. Uh, but there are quite a lot of them, so if I ever do get into Thomcraft, I could come into one of these spawner rooms with my wand and recharge it really, really quickly. So, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so, now that this is set up, we're going to be getting... Oh, that was a spider. <laughs> uh, we'll be getting all of the glowstone, sticks, redstone, gunpowder, sugar empty bottles, spider eyes that we could ever want. There's probably one more drop. I can't think of it. Or maybe, maybe I got them all. I don't know. But yeah, uh, so that is nicely collecting all this experience and just voiding it into this nullifier. Uh, I was thinking we could ship this off over into our Liquid XP Tesseract channel. And then that way we don't have to have as many nullifiers around. That's another thing we could do. Um, but yep. I just thought that would be nice and compact, just like that. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. So I'm going to let this run for a little while. Uh, I will have to get a chunk loader over here because I don't have that set up just yet. Uh, I'm going to let this run for a little while so we have plenty of glowstone. But, yeah, let's go ahead and move on. So at this moment, we're kind of playing the waiting game. I'm waiting on the scenarium to be created. I'm waiting on... More iridium to be made. We're up to 62. Yeah, we've been recording for quite some time, or I've been trying to get this episode recorded for quite some time. So we've almost made enough for another ultimate hybrid solar. Uh, I've added in more power over here, trying to speed up this process a bit. Uh, this MFSU is full. <laughs> so this is receiving more power than this MF MFSU can send. Or maybe the line is just saturated, because we also have these ultimate hybrids on that same line. All pumping in power into our system in here. Uh, I did disconnect. Well, it's really hard to see. I did disconnect the replicator from the mass fabricator. So they're no longer on the same power connection. So yeah, uh, we have 
this MFSU right here powering the uh, replicator only. And then all the other power from that outside stuff is coming in to power these two mass fabricators. And like I said, this one's going like really, really quickly, kind of. I think we're getting a little server lag or something. And this one's going moderately fast. Well, decently, I guess. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So we're just waiting on all of this stuff to complete so I can make more of these solar panels. Hopefully next episode, by next episode, we'll have a few of those already made up. And then I can go ahead and just convert everything over to these solar panels. Um, we have six of these right now. We needed a total of eight to get to the next tier. I turned off any eye. Let me turn it back on. Yeah, so solar panel. So we can go ahead and comp combine all of those once we get eight of these into a quantum solar panel. This is what I'm kind of interested in. Uh, I'm not sure why it requires this quantum core. That is pretty expensive for just combining what we already have together. I don't know what a quantum solar panel does. I don't know if it puts out 4,096 or if it puts out 8,100 and whatever. I don't know. I don't know all of those numbers. Uh, but yeah, we'll find that out hopefully next time. All right, guys. Well, I tell you what. We're going to go ahead and wrap the episode up today. Uh, I had a couple of fails today, unfortunately. I really wanted to get those the hyper transfer nodes to work with the energy didn't work if I did that wrong please let me know in the comments what I did wrong because uh, I would like to use those um, yeah we also had the field looking for the hollow hill dang it uh, yeah but I did search around a whole bunch of places looking for one of those the large sized ones with the ghosts or phantoms or whatever they're called couldn't find them oh well we got it all solved with a witch spawner. <laughs> all right, guys. That's it for this episode of Feed the Beast Infinity. Hope you guys did like it. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you did like it. And we'll see you next time. That's it. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.